Hi, I'm Richard Heath, and today we're going to take a look at the fundamentals of laying out items in EXTJS. The EXTJS layout system makes it easy to create web apps that behave a lot more like thick clients than web pages. This is great if you need to deliver rich applications across the web. Let's start by placing a component onto the page. Components are the simplest class that take part in the EXTJS rendering and layout process. Every other visual widget we're going to use, such as text fields, charts and grids, are all going to extend this base component class. I've just got a standard HTML page with the EXTJS JavaScript and stylesheet included. I've also included a main.js file that I'm going to throw all of my code into today. I'm going to add a standard EXT on ready callback that's going to get called when the page is ready. It's this function that bootstraps the loading process for our application. Now I can create my component and render it to the body of the page. Let's take a look what this looks like in our browser. Most of the time, we're not going to specify elements to render to. Instead, we're going to nest components within containers. Containers can contain components or other containers, and they lay them out in different ways. Like components, they come in various flavors, but let's just start with the base container. So first, I'm going to create two components, and then I'm going to add them to my container. You can see we add components to the container by putting them in this items array. You're going to do this a lot. You can see the default layout just stacks components on top of each other. We can make this a bit more interesting by specifying one of a dozen or so out of the box layouts we get with EXTJS. Let's switch to using the column layout and we can give each component a relative width for its column. Whenever you use a container, it's important to specify a layout. You almost never want the default auto layout that you get if you don't specify one. You'll also find yourself adding new config options to the contents of containers, like we did with the column width. These options only do something when the parent container has the right layout type. We'll see some more layouts and the options they can take shortly. It's a pain to have to create each component before adding it to the items array. Instead, we can use a more convenient syntax where we specify the config objects nested within an items array. In order for EXTJS to know which type of component it should create, we need to add an X type. Whenever you look in the documentation, you'll see the X type for each visual component. They're usually pretty easy to guess once you get used to EXTJS. For example, if we were using a text field such as this, and we wanted to switch to a date field, it's pretty straightforward. Sometimes you may see examples where there's no X type specified. In these cases, EXTJS is going to use the default X type, which is panel. Panels are more specialized containers that can have toolbars docked to their edges and various other enhancements, such as the border you can see here. If you don't need this richer functionality of the panel, then stick to the lighter weight container. It's going to be faster. Let's change our container to a more specialized one, the viewport. You'll see we don't need to render a viewport to a named element. It's automatically going to size itself to our current browser window. When we resize the browser window, the viewport's going to notice and it's going to re-render its children. You can see, as I resize, the components are keeping the correct relative column widths. Let's take a look at a couple more layouts. Here's a border layout. 
We've always got to put something in the centre region of a border layout, but then we can add other items to the north, east, south and west regions. HBox layouts lay out components horizontally, either with fixed width or using a flex which is a relative width. Some layouts, such as the VBox and HBox layouts, take additional config. When we want to set these options we need to convert the value of the layout config item from a string into an object. We can then set these additional options. In the case of HBox, we want to set an align option that will configure the behavior of the layout. Frequently, we'll find that many things within a container have the same config options. EXTJS makes this easy to manage by allowing a default object and this config is going to get applied to all of the things the container directly contains. This means it only applies to the direct contents though, so anything two, three or more levels below the container isn't going to pick up these defaults. We can also nest containers easily. Let's move our HBox layout container inside a border layout container. and we can tell the HBox layout to stretch itself to the whole center region. There are lots of great config options for components and containers. Let's add a title to our east panel and make our west panel collapsible. We should probably add some widths to make this a little bit easier to see. There we go. It's important to know you can only add new components to the items array before a component is rendered. After it's been rendered you're going to need to use the add method on the container. Here you can see I've added a button that creates a new tab on a tab panel when it's clicked. First it has to find the tab panel and then it can call the add method to add a new panel to it. It's not going to surprise you to find out there are also remove and remove all methods. Now you understand the fundamentals of components and containers, I'd suggest you take a look through all of the different types of layout available in the examples provided by Censure. If you see something you like, take a look at the config options and see how to enable the behavior in your application. I hope you found this introduction to the EXTJS layout system useful. Thanks for your time.